Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. A little bit over a week ago, the newest season of Cobra Kai dropped on Netflix, and I meant to drop this video sooner, but if you've been watching any of my recent videos, I've had the awesome opportunity of actually seeing some movies in person and doing some collabs in person with some of my YouTube peers, like Mike from Did You Z That and Rashad from Rashad G Reviews. And yeah, I wanted to make the video, but I got caught up doing other videos, and here I am. I know you guys have probably already watched other people that you care about talk about this show, uh, but we're gonna talk about it here. Season 5 of Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai is back after the All Valley where Miyaki-Do had to go down and Cobra Kai was going to rise. And once again, you have a brilliant returning cast with people like Ralph Macchio, William Zabka, Courtney Hengeller, Mary Mauser, Tanner Buchanan, Zolo Mataduena, Martin Cove, Peyton Liss, Thomas, Ian Griffith, and so many others. And then of course you have some really big names returning to the franchise like Sean Kanan, who plays Mike Barnes, and Yuji Okumoto, who plays Chosen. Hey guys, again, sorry for the late uh, video here on Cobra Kai. Uh, you know, if you guys saw some of my recent videos, you know, I went through a bit of a personal thing in my life with my dog passing away and I was kind of away from the game for a while. But now that I'm starting to dip my toes back into collabs, new releases, and I got some screener reviews, early screener reviews coming very shortly. I figured, let me get back into talking about the things I enjoy. And today we're gonna be talking about the season five of Cobra Kai or season five of Cobra Kai. I'm not really sure why I said the season five. Either way, uh, I should say that because of the fact that this has already been out for over a week and there's probably a million videos about this season everywhere and the fact that we're on the fifth season in the series, uh, I will be just kind of talking openly about the series with spoilers. So that is your warning. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a full breakdown of the entire season, but just talking about the things that stood out to me, the things I liked and I didn't like. I'm happy to say right at the top though that I really enjoyed this season. I would say I enjoyed it in some ways just as much as the fourth season and in some ways a little bit better than the fourth season. Overall, I think that the earlier portion of the show, maybe like the first two seasons for me are still some of my favorites. Uh, maybe it was just because it was new and fresh to me at the time. Uh, but yeah, overall I enjoyed the season. I found it to be another great installment into the Karate Kid uh, legacy and another great installment into the Cobra Kai franchise. And uh, overall, again, I think it does a great job of tying into those older films and expanding upon them. And like I've said in my other Karate Kid and Cobra Kai videos, what's so amazing about the show is the way that it utilizes older characters or small story beats and things that you know when you watch the movies in and of themselves are just kind of throwaway at times some characters are just kind of throwaway when you think about the whole series and the way that they've been able to tie those characters and those elements back into the story and have the spirit of characters like Miyagi in the show so present even though he's not on screen um, I think ultimately makes this show really uh, elevate the older material. I think the older films are absolutely elevated in their storytelling simply because of what this one has done. Now I do want to start off actually with my negatives for the series so we can go on and just talk about positives and I would say right out of the gate the thing I wasn't crazy about about this season was the way we started with Miguel in Mexico. When the last season ended and we knew that that's the direction he was going it was you know something I was definitely interested to see what they would do but ultimately it just really doesn't culminate to anything in this season. And outside of the idea of his father showing up in a future season, I really can't see or understand why this was even really featured in this story. It felt like they didn't really know what to do with the whole storyline around him finding his father and the way that they approached it, I found to be a little bit goofy. When we first get there to Mexico, he ends up getting hustled by these guys who end up uh, robbing from him. And it was strange to me right out of the gate because he shows up to these dudes and takes his backpack off and puts it on the ground. And instantly, as a viewer, I thought, okay, they're going to steal that backpack. And that's exactly what happened. And so that was a bit of a letdown for me where it was just like, well, what a dumb decision for a kid who's learned to fight and, you know, knows not to be an idiot based on previous seasons. But in this moment, he was like overly trusting. Then after that, he ends up going to this bar and hears the name Hector and instantly assumes that it's his dad. And, you know, with a name like Hector, as a Spanish individual myself or coming from Spanish descent, it... It just seems silly. You know how many Hectors I know? There's so many, whether they're Mexican, Cuban, Puerto Rican, whatever the case may be. And especially in Mexico, Hector is a very common name. So for him to just walk up to some dude and be like, Carmen Diaz, you know her? It's like, relax, R relax, Miguel, settle it down. And and then later on, it turns out to actually be his dad. But you know, again, it's the same thing. Somebody just says Hector and he's like, dad? something about that just seems so cheesy and corny and just weird. Like, why was that even really implemented into the story, the way that they approached the whole father thing for me was strange. 
And then I really enjoyed the fact that you have Johnny and Robbie coming to get him, even though Robbie doesn't know that that's the case. And I like the camaraderie between Johnny and Robbie in the season, especially as they go to find Miguel. But I was really disappointed that they skipped the entire road trip back home. I felt like that was gonna be some really pivotal storytelling that they really could have done. And they just skip forward, do a little time jump and they're back home to normal. So the whole Mexico thing really kind of feels irrelevant because another part of that is you have Johnny taking Robbie without him knowing so that you know they can go and get Miguel and he wants the two of them to reconcile so you mean to tell me in a many hour road trip back home there wasn't any really important dialogue towards their growth uh, I found that to just be super strange and I just felt like why would you cut that when you really could have written some interesting dialogue around these three specifically being stuck in a car being on a road trip they could have even had it be that their car broke down and they kind of had to work as a team together to realize that if they work together that they were actually a lot stronger and ultimately that's what it comes to later on but i found that the whole robbie and miguel thing was super predictable once we knew they were going to fight um it, it i saw exactly where it was going and i i like the fact that they're friends now but i ultimately just found it to be a little bit predictable and i felt like they didn't really develop the conversation around them being friends again as much as I would have liked them to. Another gripe I had with this season was I found that the kids were kind of sidelined in this season. They're definitely present and they make some funny jokes from time to time and there's definitely elements about their presence in the story overall that I enjoyed, especially in the latter half of the season. Uh, but this season is definitely far more about the adults, which on the, the flip side, I did enjoy. I did enjoy spending more time with Daniel LaRusso and kind of seeing him kind of unravel and he's making all the poor decisions and kind of blowing his life up because of his rivalry with Terry Silver. Uh, I did really enjoy seeing that. I thought that Ralph Macchio gives a great performance in that. And I also loved the way that uh, William Zabka uh, played Johnny Lawrence in this season and uh, everything that he's going through with wanting to be a better father, both for Robbie and his upcoming baby with Carmen. I thought that was an interesting story beat and I liked the story character development there. Uh, the character of Chosen being in here was awesome. Really enjoyed a lot of the humor around him. Uh, but ultimately, outside of being a badass who was ready to fight all the time and, you know, somebody who was supporting Daniel through this, uh, he didn't have a whole lot to do outside of those roles specifically. And, I, you know, then you have Mike Barnes showing up and I kind of found that he was not really really utilized the way that I thought he was gonna be. When you watch the trailer, he seems like he's gonna be a bigger part of the story. And once his, you know, the whole thing happens when, you know, his furniture store gets burnt down, you really don't see him again until the very end. And even then in the whole final climax of battles, he has a couple of scenes and then he's kind of gone for a little bit until the very end again. So I, I ultimately found that his role in the season was a bit of a letdown based on the returning characters that we've had in the past. And even in this season, having chosen return, you know, to then eventually, you know, be a much bigger part Part than Michael Barnes was, I found that's just to be a little bit disappointing. But honestly, those are my only real gripes with this season. You know, I just wish the kids were a little bit more involved and I wish that some of the returning characters had a little bit more to do, specifically the character of Mike Barnes. Uh, but I did enjoy what they did with our adult characters and growth that those characters have over the course of the season. I was thoroughly entertained episode by episode and I had a lot of fun with all the action, the choreography and the fun over the top karate stuff that's going on. Uh, overall, I found this to be an entertaining season. Again, with really good visuals and a lot of just, you know, good camera work and just a lot of things about it that I just really enjoyed. I just found it to be a good, fun show. Uh, again, this is just such a lighthearted, fun thing to put on with stakes, you know? And that's something I enjoy too, is that there's a good sense of stakes. It gets you gripped and every time an episode ends, um, it just has that great cliffhanger element that just brings you into the next episode. So ultimately, I had a lot of fun with this season. Ultimately, most things about this really worked. And of course, I definitely want to praise Thomas Ian Griffith, uh, again, for his performance as Terry Silver, definitely a big part of last season, but uh, here he kind of takes the main stage as the big main bad. You have Martin Cove in here, of course, as Crease, but you know, with him being in prison, there's a whole different kind of storyline going on there and definitely curious to see what they do moving forward. Uh, but Thomas Ian Gr Griffith, I, I thought was just such a menacing villain in this entire season and the way that he builds Cobra Kai over the course of the season felt different, unique and fresh. And ultimately he just gives a really good menacing villain performance. If I had to say the one character that I felt had some of the best growth in the entire season of the younger generation I would say it's definitely Peyton List as Tori I really enjoyed her character's growth over the course of the season and I would argue that she's definitely one of the characters that have the most growth outside of Daniel LaRusso as well as Johnny Lawrence so I'd say if I had to think of my highlights for this season it was definitely the three of them a part of me thought it was going to be Miguel and Robbie's whole story that would have been one of my favorite elements but like I mentioned though I really enjoyed it and I'm glad that they're friends again there was certainly an element for me that felt like they 
I don't know, they could have done more with it. It really felt like they could have done more like to really develop via the dialogue their their friendship again. And it just felt like, you know, they had a couple moments, I don't like you, I don't like you, you're not cool, you know, I hate you, whatever, we're not gonna be friends, but all this, you know, nonsense. And then they have, a, you know, one good serious fight that, you know, kind of resembles a previous fight and then that's the end of it, you know what I mean? Handshakes, let's go get lunch. And it just felt like, again, I really wanted to see that road trip. I, I feel like we were robbed of that because again, they had just gotten him after everything that just happened. And you mean to tell me on that whole trip where they just sat there silent and didn't say anything to one another? Yeah, that just seems incredibly strange to me. But other than that, again, I did enjoy the show. Uh, I did enjoy those characters that I mentioned that I felt really were expanded upon. And in moving forward, I'm just really looking forward to seeing what's going to end up happening. I did think for a moment that Chosen was actually going to die. And a part of me sometimes wonders if, you know, this is ever going to be a show that's going to have stakes to the point of maybe character death. Um, you know, I think the biggest moment of like stakes when I think of previous seasons really a lot of times is probably Miguel being paralyzed but even that is fixed fairly quickly when you think of the entirety of the show um it would have been a lot more shocking if he was still in a wheelchair to this day and they still kept his character involved in the narrative it would be really interesting to see what they would do but of course maybe that would make for a better show overall this is a fun silly good show that's just entertaining from beginning to end and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did despite some of those negatives and I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say so feel free drop some spoiler comments comments down below what you like what you not like what worked for you what didn't work for you what did you want to see that you didn't see and what did you see that you ended up thinking i didn't know i needed that but i'm glad i got it a big thanks to you guys for watching hit that like button comment your thoughts subscribe for more videos and i'll see you beautiful motherfuckers in another video bye bye i, I honestly don't know why i said that i'm gonna keep it in because it just it just came out but i'll see you beautiful people in another video bye bye